Hi, I'm Megan, a professional writer and writing coach, and today I'm analyzing the lyrics to two songs from Taylor Swift's album, Folklore. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. It's so good to see you, and I'm excited to talk about writing with you guys today. I have heard neither of these songs before, so you're getting my blind reaction. So let's jump into it. Green was the color of the grass where I used to read at Centennial Park. Okay, this already has such a fun beat to it, and she's really highlighting colors here. So this is not something that's new to her. She has a whole album called Red, so color has definitely come into play in her songs before. But it's always an interesting choice to phrase and write your sentences in ways that are a bit unconventional. So instead of saying the grass was green at Centennial Park where I used to read, which may, might be how it would be written in a novel, let's say, or a short story, she says green was the color of the grass where I used to read at Centennial Park. So whenever you're forming sentences, think about where things are located within it because that's ultimately what's going to place the emphasis for your reader. Here she's saying green was the color of the grass. So not only is she getting us to focus on that, she's also kind of telling us that that's what her character is focusing on because that is the first detail we get. She says, I used to think I would meet somebody there. So she doesn't think that anymore, which is maybe a hint at what's to come. Then she repeats this structure. Teal was the color of your shirt when you were 16 at the yogurt shop you used to work at to make a little money. So again, the order of details matters here. And I think the specifics of at the yogurt shop you used to work at to make a little money is pretty cute. This is reading a lot more like a poem and her ideas are more connected than we've seen in previous songs. In a lot of her more pop songs, you'll get those quick phrases, you know, cherry lips, crystal skies. I can show you incredible things, rose garden filled with thorns, you just get these little phrases. Whereas here you get teal was the color of your shirt when you were 16 at the yogurt shop you used to work at to make a little money. I mean that goes on and on. So that's a really cool stylistic change from at least the other songs that we've looked at. And isn't it just so pretty to think all along there was some invisible string tying you to me? Hmm, okay. So we can talk about personification with this. She's personifying time. So personification is where you attribute human qualities or human behaviors to objects that are not human. In this case, she's doing that with time. She's giving time human-like qualities. Time gave me no compasses. Time gave me no signs. Time cannot give you something. So we're personifying it as if it's able to give as humans can give. And she's also saying that time is curious, which again, personification giving it human-like qualities. So time gave me no compasses, compasses give you direction, and it gave her no signs. Time gave her no hints as to where she was going and where she would end up. She says, were there clues I didn't see? All of this is telling me and giving me the impression that she's ended up in a place she wasn't expecting. And then she says, isn't it just so pretty to think all along? And I think that's an interesting choice there, pretty. Isn't it just so pretty to think all along? You don't really hear that phrasing used. You would say, isn't it nice to think about? Isn't it fun to think about? But isn't it so pretty to think? All along there was some invisible string tying you to me. But I wonder if she's saying this in a way that's like, isn't it nice to think about this even though it's not true? Or isn't it nice to think about this because it's true? So I don't know which one it is yet, but maybe we'll find out. That was the blood of the song in the cab on your first trip to LA. Ooh, again, we get that longer phrasing. So many different things going on in that one phrase and also a reference to her song, Bad Blood. Just, do I get points for knowing that? Old was the waitress on a three-year trip getting lunch down by the lakes. Doesn't she also have a song called The Lakes? She said I look like an American singer. Interesting. What I'm thinking here is that without her knowing it, life tied her to this person. As she thinks back on things that she's learned now, it's so pretty to think that all along there was this string tying them together. And then Bold was the waitress on our three-year trip getting lunch down by the lakes. She said I looked like an American singer. So they obviously weren't in America. The lakes is somewhere else. I'm guessing wherever he lived because he traveled to LA, I'm assuming to see her. And I'm assuming it's this British guy that she was going out with for a long time. Either the waitress was being cheeky and she really knew who Taylor was, or Taylor found some kind of ambiguity and anonymity in this moment. Interesting. Okay. Time, mystical time, cutting me open, then healing me fine. 
So we have time, mystical time, cutting me open, then healing me fine. That's another great juxtaposition of opposites. We've talked about this before. She does this a lot of putting opposite things together for effect. Again, she's personifying time. Time cuts her open, but then also heals her. So it's the cause of pain, but also the solution or the remedy to that pain, which I mean, if you've lived, you know that's true. Then she says, were there clues I didn't see again? So did she not notice that time was doing this for her? And then she says, isn't it so pretty to think there was an invisible string tying you to me? So that makes me think that he, maybe he was going through the same experience that she was. Out of all the wrong ones, right into that dive bar. It pulled her out of all the wrong arms right into that dive bar, which I think is interesting. Cause I feel like if I went to a dive bar, maybe you'd end up in the wrong arms, if you know what I'm saying? So this invisible string pulled her right out of all the wrong people she was choosing and helped her find the right one. Something wrapped all of my past mistakes in and put chains around her demons. So these things that might have felt like they were able to constantly get at her are now not able to do that. This invisible string is helping lock away her demons and her past mistakes. Wool to brave the seasons. So what does that mean? Something is keeping her warm. It's fending off the cold. Again, as we think about writing, just thinking about the specific words that are gonna pull out the right images in our reader's mind and get at what we're talking about without just spelling it out. So she doesn't say, my past mistakes mistakes and my demons went to jail. You know, we, we imprisoned them. She says, you know, we wrapped them in barbed wire, which also gives just a visceral like, oh, imagine being wrapped in barbed wire and then, you know, wrapped chains around them. So there's just this sense of like, they can't escape. And it's a much more effective image. Then she says, one single thread of gold tied me to you. So the string is no longer invisible. It's made of gold. And in terms of writing, gold is typically seen as the top. Gold was the steel of my axe to grind. So you can see her repeating this structure too. Blank was the blank. Green was the color of the grass. Bold was the waitress. Cold was the steel of my axe to grind for the boys who broke my heart. So she's really good at using idioms, which are common phrases. Ax to grind is an idiom. I think it's interesting that she invokes a sense of being warmed by this. She says, "You gave it gave me wool to brave the seasons. And then she immediately kind of goes into cold was the steel of my ax to grind. When you have an ax to grind, it means you, you've got a vendetta against someone. Like you've, you're holding something against someone and you want to get back at them. And it's for the boys who broke my heart. So, you know, understandable, but she's she says, now I send their baby's presence. She's getting more specific. Gold was the color of the leaves when I showed you around Centennial Park. Gold was the color. So there's the gold again. A single thread of gold tied me to you. And then gold was the color of the leaves. So whenever you're reading and when you're writing, you want to think about how you're using color. What colors are you using and why? If you're reading, what colors are coming up more often? How are people described? Are they described with certain colors versus others or not? It can be easy to just randomly assign colors to your characters in terms of what they wear, what they look like, but using color intentionally can really add color to your writing. <laughs> give it more depth. And then she brings us back to Centennial Park. So instead of green was the grass, gold was the color of the leaves. So what is that telling us? That contrast, because she's brought it up twice now, Centennial Park, but there's a distinct difference, which is the grass is green when she's there or when she first talks about it. And now gold were the colors of the leaves. Gold was the color of the leaves. She was maybe in the spring or summer sitting in the park reading. And then now that it's fall, she's showing him around Centennial Park. So I like that contrast. She's giving us two scenes of the same place, but a very, very very distinct differences. So love that comparison. Hell was the journey, but it brought me heaven. Again, what she always does, <laughs> bringing those two opposite terms together to provide emphasis and effect. Hell was the journey, so the journey was not great, but it brought me the complete opposite, which is heaven. And that kind of connects back to her previous line about time cutting her open and then healing her. And also, isn't it just so pretty to think all along there was something tying me to you? Like, even though things Things weren't great at one point. There was still that invisible thread tying her, pulling her toward this heaven. Okay. Time, wondrous time. Time, wondrous time. So now time is wondrous. What was it before? 
first time was curious, then time was mystical, and now time is wondrous. Give me the blues and then purple pink skies. Gave me the blues and then purple pink skies. So again, she's saying, she's repeating the same idea, just in different ways. Time has cut her open, but it's also healed her. It's been hard, but it also led her to where she is. She says, and it's cool, baby, with me. So she's all right with the process it's taken to get here because she's finally arrived in this place. Okay, so that was Invisible String. So what did we take away from that? Use of color can be so significant. In this song, it's a great example of showing the passage of time. She never tells us what season it is. She never tells us how much time has gone by, except when she says something about three years, our three-year trip. But she really does, she really isn't clear on what the timeline is of all of this. Though she mentions time quite a lot, but she shows us by using color. And then we get this fun phrasing that she has in this song. Green was the color of the grass where I used to read at Centennial Park. Teal was the color of your shirt. Bad was the blood of the song. Bold was the waitress on our trip. Compared to the songs we've looked at so far, it's a different type of phrasing than she usually uses. And it's really cool. She's got longer phrases in there that really help create little mini snippets and scenes that tell the story. I wouldn't say of the songs I've looked at so far, this is the best writing, but I do love all the color in it. Even blue skies, or it gave me the blues and then purple pink skies. She's really using color to say a lot. And then we got to talk a little bit about personification. So still things that we can take away from this song. And I think uh, I really liked the kind of staccato beat on that. It was pretty. So there we have it. We finally listened to some songs from Folklore. I'm excited to listen to other ones. There's definitely such a different quality and style to her songwriting in that album so far. So I'm looking forward to more. If you enjoyed this video, it really helps my channel if you like and subscribe and leave me a comment letting me know what you liked about the song and what you think about what we've talked about today. As always, take care, happy writing, and I will see you next time. Thank you.